Hello everyone, this is Linda again and welcome back to my channel. Downloading files from the Google Drive API version 3 can appear to be a little complicated when you first start developing your application to use the Google Drive API. I have seen a lot of questions relating to this on Stack Overflow over the years. My name is Linda Lawton. I am a Google developer expert, and I have been working with the Google API since 2012. And I have been answering your questions about Google development on Stack Overflow for just as long. I run divetoe.com where you can find tutorials and sample code for all of your Google development needs. If this video helps you, please consider giving it a like and sharing it. It helps me to know which videos you enjoyed and which ones I should create more of. If you would like to see more of my Google development content, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you'll be notified when I upload new videos. I thought this time we would look into using a service account. Think of a service account as a dummy user. You can pre-authorize a service account, granting it access to your data. So I can take the service account's email address, share a directory on my personal Google Drive account with it, and then it will have access to upload to that directory without my having to give it consent. It's as simple as that. There will be no need for user consent screen to pop up. The code will just run because it will already have been pre-authorized. You should consider using a service account if you are accessing private data that you, the developer, own. If you're accessing data that belongs to another user, then you should be using OAuth 2 and requesting their permission to access their data. You should also know that not all Google APIs support service account authentication. The YouTube API, for example, does not support service accounts. And the Gmail API and the Google Calendar API only support service accounts for G Suite accounts, which was recently renamed to Google Workspace. You have to set up service accounts on the domain in order to grant them access. You will need to go to Google Developer Console and create a new service account. Download the JSON key file and don't forget to enable the Google Drive API under Libraries. If you have any issues, I have another video which should be popping up here, which you can go check out and it'll walk you through create, how to create a service account credentials and download the key file. I recommend downloading the credentials JSON file and not the P12 file. How you download a file with the Google Drive API depends upon the type of file that it is, or rather the MIME type of the file. If you're downloading a binary file, for example, an image, then you would use the normal file get method, which will return a file stream that you can use to save the file. However, if you want to download a Google Drive file, which has an internal Google Drive MIME type, like for example, a Google Sheet or a Google Document, then you would actually need to do a file export. Using a file export, the API will convert the file for you to a standard MIME type, like a doc or a CSV file. For this example, I'm going to create a simple .NET Core console application, but you can use service accounts with libraries or ASP.NET Core applications as well. It's completely up to you which one you use for your project. The code you'll be using will be exactly the same as the code that I'm showing you here. In order to use the Google Drive API version 3, we will need to add a NuGet package to our project. This NuGet package will include all of the methods we will need for both authorizing our application as well as accessing all of the methods behind the Google Drive API version 3. For this project, I'm going to add a single constant to the top of my program class file. This is the path to the JSON key file, which we downloaded from Google Developer Console. 
The JSON key file contains all of the information needed to authorize the service account to Google. The code needed to authorize a service account is actually only one line. You just pass it the JSON key file and define which scope of access you need. In this case, because we'll be downloading a file, we probably only need read access, but with service accounts, I tend to always give them full access because I know it's an account that I control and therefore I don't see any reason to limit its access. The last part of the setup we will need to do is to create a drive service object. The drive service object is the object we will be using to make all calls to the Google Drive API. In order to set this up, all we have to do is pass it the credentials that we had from the previous call. Now that everything's set up, I thought we'd have a little bit of fun. The first thing we need to do is figure out the file ID of the file we would like to download. Now remember I mentioned that service accounts are dummy users. A service account only actually has access to the files that you have shared with it. So in this case, we shared a directory over on my personal Google Drive account with it. So I'm going to use the files list method and pass it the queue parameter, which will allow me to search for files within that directory. So I pass it parents in and then the directory ID. This will return by default all the files within that directory. But I've also added a MIME type to it. So I'm searching for plain text files or .txt files within that directory. And this should only return one file in my case but it may return more depending upon how many files that you have in that directory. So now that we have actually found a file ID that we would like to download, notice how we call the files get method. The files get method would by default just return the metadata for that file, but it also returns a file stream that we can use to actually download the file. Now remember, this file being a text file is a binary type file. It's a file that my computer will already support because it's a .txt, which means it doesn't need to be converted. I can just download it. You can do the same with this for images. If a JPEG is on my drive account, a JPEG will still be on my personal PC. You don't need to convert them. And now if we run our application, you'll be able to see that the file actually just downloads. And be again, because it's a TXT, it just downloads as a text file and I'll be able to open it on my computer. Okay, let's try the search again. This time I'm listing files with a Google Drive internal MIME type of spreadsheet. That's because I have a Google Sheet up in that directory as well and I'd like to download it. But what happens if I try and download a internal Google Drive sheet? Well, I'm not gonna be able to open it on my computer because my computer doesn't know what that MIME type is. So in that case, what we do is we do a files export method. This will export a file stream of type text CSV because I told file export what MIME type the file should be converted to. Now, if we run the application again, this time a .csv file appears on my machine and my computer can open it. So I hope you could see that downloading files from Google Drive isn't actually all that complicated. You just have to know what the MIME type of your file is in order to know which method you should be using to either download it or export it. Well, that's all for now. I hope to see you back for my next video. And as always, I hope you have a really great day.